Agriculture's top scientists have time and again produced breakthroughs in creating healthier, hardier crops, along with better equipment to grow them, and we have all benefited. But at one university, some are now looking at a new challenge. Can corn help in the fight against one of our most troubling maladies? Here's Jason. Iowa sweet corn in the summer, it's hard to beat. Most folks aren't thinking about the chemistry that makes it so sweet, though, but farmers like Ron Deerdorf are. You know, you can pick it too early where it's not developed and hasn't got the flavor yet, or you can pick it too late where it's too big, getting tough, and the sugar's turning to starch, so it's not as sweet. In fact, inside those yellow kernels, the starch gene is mutated to stay sweet. So that got scientists at Iowa State University thinking. If the starch can be altered to make sweet corn sweeter, why couldn't they modify it to make it digest more slowly? Why would they want to do that? The more fully digestible the starch is, the, the uh, more moderate is the insulin response and the release of glucose into the bloodstream. And that could be a benefit for the 21 million diabetics in the United States. For them, moderating insulin and glucose through diet and medication is a daily fact of life. And so being able to help those folks maintain better control over their blood sugar is going to protect them from um, all of those bad consequences that can happen if you have too much, you know, too high levels of blood glucose for long periods of time. Researchers at Iowa State have been working on this project for the past 15 years, getting inside the genes, looking at how they're made, splicing, moving things around, developing corn seed with a modified starch. What we're able to do is change around the structure of the starch by changing the activities of the factors that are used to assemble it. The scientists grew their own corn plants and harvested ears of corn made from the modified starch. So to find out if this scientific research is paying off, they have to find out about the starch, and that's inside the kernels of corn. Well, to do that, they have to slice open each kernel individually, one by one, and get the starch out from the inside. Once they do that, the starch gets mixed with a digestive enzyme in the lab to see if the experiment is working. So here Claire has two samples of digestion-resistant starch. These samples have been incubated overnight in a solution of digestive enzymes, and you can see that the solution is still relatively cloudy, meaning that the starch has not been totally digested. In comparison, here we have two samples of normal corn starch that have been digested with the same enzymes for uh, a similar period of time and they have been completely digested. So we're very excited about this result. The next step, human taste trials. To find out if the positive results in the lab will work in the real world, the researchers have to measure glucose in humans after ingesting the cornstarch. Blood samples are taken from student volunteers to measure their glucose level. Then the students are given a porridge made from the cornstarch. Never mind what the students think about the cornstarch mixture. It tastes horrible. It's their blood glucose level that the researchers are interested in. It's measured afterwards to find out if the starch is slowly digested like the scientists hope. I think that helping people to be able to control their blood sugar if they're diabetic is going to be an increasingly big problem. We have an obesity epidemic, although you know, I think people are working hard to try to figure out how to stop that. The number one disease that goes along with obesity is type 2 diabetes. More testing and governmental approval mean it will be several years before this modified starch could be available to be used in food products. And the scientists here at Iowa State believe besides diabetics, there could be another group benefiting from all of this stuff. Corn farmers, due to the increased demand for a more valuable corn crop. Food additives are only one of the many uses for vegetable starches. Using vegetable starch for ironing began in Europe in the 16th century. The starch made it possible to stiffen the wide collars and ruffs that were popular with Europe's well-to-do. In addition to providing crisp edges on shirts and petticoats, dirt and sweat would stick to the starch, not the clothes, 
making them easier to launder. And that's our show for today. We thank you for watching. I'm Paul Ryan, and we want to see you next time right here in America's Heartland.